Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to Carefree Lewis G. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. Again, it's a rare one. We don't really do videos as much as we used to on the channel. But when it comes to big games, we come with a big content and we come with a big guest as well. First off, a man that needs no introduction. If you guys don't know him, I need to ask where the fuck have you been the last seven years? I got my boy with me, Troops. What are you telling me, my guy? How have you been, bro? Come on, my bro. You already know we're back again. You understand? Bring up my brother. You understand? Man like Lewis. Man like the Ethiopian Carlton Banks. You already know my brother. Come Northwest on, in the go. Northwest in the building. Come on. Good to see you, bro. Make sure you check out the podcast. Lewis is on that. You get me? He's got me in tears already, but I swear down, fam. Funny you, blood. Yeah, guys, as you already know, back again with Troops Podcast. Check it out. You guys already know the links. I'm going to leave the link down in the description below if you guys haven't checked out already. But again, if you guys haven't checked out already, what the fuck are you man doing already? <laughs> Check it out. Subscribe, like, follow, all of that. And while you're doing that as well, like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G if you guys haven't done so already. We're getting very close to 25K, but we need all of you man's help. So press that like and subscribe button and leave a comment down in the comment section, all of that, and just stay tuned because we've got plenty of good comments content coming in as well first things first before we even go into football we were talking about behind the camera so we'll get into it here as well how's life in america been for you bro nah it's lit you know like the the crossover to that side has been has been quite easy i'm not gonna lie like i've had i've got good people around me like shout out jet shout out czar shout out josh shout out like even like dave jen the whole like team you get me? They very accommodating. I've got like control of my content. You get me? It's it's good, bro. You understand? Like I've moved house as well now. So you get me? It's time to get the family over there now, blood. Damn right, bro. And again, you told me off camera, like the first time you went over there, that your main plan was to get the family over within the future. And it's you've been there for over a year now and it's still in progress. So I want to ask, what's been the main thing holding you back from getting everyone over? Like Rona blood, you get me? I went, it's, it's, it's nearly a year. It's about eight months because I went out there in November. Mm. So, it's, so it's about it's about eight months. But I signed, I've been signed for a year because I signed in July. So I've been signed for a year, but I've been out there since October, that no, November. I went out there on Bonfire, the 5th. So what's learning it is, is Rona blood, you get me? Like the whole V word, you get me? I'm, I'm not really with it. You understand and because i've been around so many places and i've been blessed not to catch it i'm saying to myself like i don't need it blood you get me like some people might need it i personally think i don't need it in it so you get me that's that's another Someone issue said it, isn't it? you I'm, get me like, I'm on that too like i've been around all of england the last year and a half i ain't you get me nothing. You understand? Like I've been to red list countries. Like you get me. I went to Poland when it was on the red list. I went to Tampa when Tampa was the only place open in America, and everyone was going to Tampa to party. I went on my birthday. I was in a club like it was 2019, bro. You get me? Like it was 2019. There's no social distancing, no masks, nothing. Came back to NY, took the took the test. Boom, come back clear. So you get me? Like I'm. I I don't tell people like, oh, don't don't do it. Like da 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 da. But me personally, that. Like, you get me? My girl has the same kind of views as well, like, you get me? So we, we have to, you understand, the way they're coming out with, oh, you need it to do this and do that. It's, it's like they're putting man in a corner type of thing, you get me? So mm -hmm. you understand? That's what's kind of been slowing down the progress. And because England are behind America, like, America's more advanced with it, you get me? America's more open. Like, the whole of America's basically open now, you get me? It's still, but because of the way England are dealing with it, they're not opening the borders to England because England ain't dealing with it correct. Then, oh, certain man, you get me? Like me, I've got the O1 visa, so I've got a national exemption. I had to go to the embassy. Well, not me, like the lawyers of Barstool went to the embassy and said that, like, yo, this is troops. Like he, he's a U, he's a YouTuber. He needs to fly in and out the country because the content. He's his family's in England as well. He's trying to bring them over, so he's got to go back to sort out visas and rare tear tear. So I've been given a national exemption for a year. <laughs> <clears throat> for a year hmm. from April. So I've got like another six months left on it. So I can fly from England to America, but I don't have that for like to fly another country or hit this country. Oh, they or... couldn't get a PCR test or nothing. Nah, bro. Like they're not letting direct flights from England to America. Like you'd have to go somewhere, chill there for 10 days and then fly from there to America. 
like all the man you see in America, like when Central C went to America, he probably had to flip in. He either got a national exemption or he went somewhere chilled and then went to America because you can't fly direct unless you have a national exemption. Like even man that are double jabbed can't fly in yet. They're trying to open up something now where if you're double jabbed, you could get into America, but they're trying to do that, innit? You get me? And it's 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 the way it's going, bro. It's it's peak, fam. You get me? It's looking like you understand. I'm I'm not, I'm 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 European pissed. Ways are gonna be a myth for me this season, but it is what it is. Bro, I might have bro. Like, even, imagine like God for God. Bro, imagine they say to me, I can't go back unless I have the ting blood. That's fucking with man's. Get to that after a while, you know. Bro, that's fucking with man's bread. You understand? Like, oh, like Robbie's got it as well. Like. Bear man, I got it. Like Zar just got his second one. Jet ski ain't got it. I ain't got it. Like there's a couple. Like you get me. Like most people are bucked now. They have it. But it's just for like me, I can't lie. For me, it's 50-50. Half the guys I know have it. Half the guys I know don't. My street friends don't have it. And then like my people that I know from like YouTube, they have it. You get mm. me. But like with me, like I don't know, man. It's a sticky one, bro. Yeah, I, f- I feel like it's going to get to a point where we all end up having it anyway because this thing ain't going away. I'm telling you, and n- this new variant, they're dropping this thing like it's weed blood. New strain, this, that. You understand? You're going to have gelato rolling up, Skittles yeah, rolling up. Yeah, there's a variant now. I'm waiting for Ethiopia to get theirs. Real thing, blood. I'm waiting for the Jamaican one. I might want to catch that one. It might have blood in it in them thing there. You get me? I fucking hell, man. You never know, but... Let's turn this back into the football discussion, to be honest. Like, I see why we kept it off football, because for you guys, it has been peak. Yeah, it has like been a that, rough yeah. summer for you, man, as well. First off, we'll go into the window. And you, we spoke about on the podcast as well, I think you said 120 million Arteta has spent. Is it in this window or is it in this entire <laughs> reign? 129 million in this window, when the Ramsdale. By the time this video comes out, we should have Ramsdale and Odegaard deal done. So, yeah, 129 million for this window. That's without Partey. That's without Mari. That's without who else? Pa- Mari, Partey. He got Cedric on loan. Ryan was on loan. He bought Renarsson. See what I mean? He's, he's, had, he's had money, blood. You get me? He's had about, he's had nearly 200 million, bro. He's had nearly 200 million and. Do we look better? No. You get me? Like, if the, if if for me, I keep saying it, bro. Conte is available, blood. Like, if Conte had this transfer kitty, I'm sure we would have better players, blood. We might have not, we might not have bought as many, but the quality would be better, blood. You get me? Like, we've spent more money than Man United, but they've 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 only bought two men, but them two men they bought are going to make an instant impact, in my opinion. You get me? The man that we're buying. They're not going to make an instant impact, blood. Like, this is the future, like, Lakonga's 21, Ben White's 23, Odegaard's 23, fucking Ramsdale's 23. All these men, you get me, two, three years, they're going to come good. Saka's 19, Smith Rowe's 20. That's the problem we had last year with the signings that we made too, because we got a lot of young players in our attack, but we had no experience, which is why I wanted Romelu Lukaku as well over Erling Haaland, because Haaland would have been a great long-term uh, project for us as well. But Haaland also needs time to adapt to the Premier League, and he's also young too. He's only 21 years old. Lukaku's 28 years old, so he has experience. He has years in the Premier League, years in Syria as well, and he has the experience of carrying a team. Like, he carried into Milan to the Scudetto. All of the attacking stats Romelu Lukaku was top of. So that's why I'm glad we at least have some experience to bring in the younger players and to get the best out of them. And even for the young players, like now they've won the Champions League. For me, that's experience. Like you lot shouldn't be shook of any big games or anything like that. You lot have faced Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, and you faced Man City in the final and you've gone and won it. You lot shouldn't be worried about anything anymore. You guys and your signings, though, I get it for a long-term project. <clears throat> It's, just, it's Some of the decisions are still weird. Like, Odegaard makes sense. Like, you need a number 10 to squad, and I think he's going to be good in a few years too. Ramsdale, though. I know you lot want a goalkeeper as well. You lot ain't feeling Leno the same way you used to, but, like, not even trying to banter. What does Ramsdale bring to Arsenal that Leno doesn't? Or what does he bring that makes him a £30 million signing? It's At, at the moment, 
at the moment it's 24 mil because they're saying six million add-ons he has to break into oh, the first yeah, team he has to break into the first team we have to get europe a certain amount of times or something you get me <clears throat> so it's 24 million but he's 23 years old so the only thing i can see is that they want him as a future number one but the only thing i'm saying is that he costs more than leno so is he coming in as a number one you get me like people like his record is, is a mad thing bro you get me you could say he had a poor defense in front of him but you get me the record is still there relegated. you get me he's been relegated with fulham relegated with sheffield united relegated with chesterfield like you get me it's 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 a sticky one still like he hasn't had he hasn't had the most of luck uh with with, with his clubs you get me but you understand you never know but he could come good you know I mean like rob robinson got i think of like robinson he got injured from he injured sorry he got um relegated with hull mm. uh, Maguire got relegated with hull you get me uh we see what they're doing now <clears throat> so that's the only thing that i can really think of as, as as a defense for him he's 23 goalkeepers don't really come into their prime until 28 32. between that between that age there is when a keeper will come into his prime you get me so like i tweeted as well like i said he could come good like he could be one for the future you get me he could come good like but you understand at, at this moment in time he's not the signing that we needed we're buying a lot of people for the future you get me and we need it's good we're buying for the future but we need a bit of experience in there as well blood you get me like the experience we have i don't really think that's good experience blood like shaka you get me i don't think that's a good experience player party is a good experience player you understand Tierney's a good one you get me like but there's a couple of them where i'm like nah blood you man are you they, i'm not hearing these man experience blood because you man have been here and you ain't doing nothing blood you understand bellerin and these man you get me willie allen these fucking idiots blood you understand so it's, it's it's a madness bro like, but that's the only thing i can say with um ramsdale is it's gotta be for the future it's gotta be for the future but the question is what's even happening with you guys' future because I can't. It, it, we know it's an Arteta thing, like before we even get into it. We know it's a Mikel Arteta thing. But even with that in mind, what's your hopes for this season? Because I have never, never, ever seen Arsenal fans look so depressed going into a season. <coughs> like, I've seen you guys go into a season and say, okay, we at least have a Bamiyang, or we've come off winning the FA Cup and we have something to go off at the very least. I have heard nothing to try and say, okay, we can go for top four. We can try and get back into Europe with a sore squad. All I've heard is depression and I don't want the season to start and everything like that. And for me, I get it because like the team still looks like an absolute joke from top to bottom and Mikel Arteta is Mikel Arteta. But there is also the lack of European football as well. And for me, like I was, I remember speaking to Robbie about it last week on his show. And he had Arsenal down as dark horses for top four because of it. And I'm not going to say top four. I'm not saying top four for you, man. But in terms of the season you guys have, I think you guys are really underestimating what a lack of European football can do for you guys. Every week you're having a free midweek and no break. And you lot know how annoying the Thursday to Sunday fixtures go. You basically write off the Sunday fixture just based off the Thursday game. So now you don't have any of that to worry about. You're only in free competition for the season. Could you not see a better season for you guys? Not really. Because nah, when you look at the teams above us, they got better teams, blood. You get me? Even if they're playing more games, they've got better squads than us. <clears throat> you get me? So I can't see us breaking into the top four. Robbie's smoking budge, fam. He's not even smoking bud. He's smoking budge, blood. He's smoking something else, fam. You get me? He's smoking toenails. You get me? I don't know what that nigga smoking, blood. <laughs> He's smoking toenails, blood. Big man thing, bro. I don't know what the fuck's going on down there, blood. You get me? I don't know what expressions is fucking great smoking, blood. I swear to God, blood. You understand? But top four, no chance in my opinion, even without um, European football. The signings we've made, they're not top four signings, blood. They're not going to, you get me, break into the, we're not going to break into the top four with this squad, blood. You get me, like, the squad hasn't improved in my opinion, like, you understand? We still need, we still need a right back, blood. You understand? We are helpless on that right hand side, bro. You get me? And we're buying every other position apart from that position, blood. You get me? We're not addressing proper key areas, like, you understand? I don't know how we don't have a right back in yet. I don't know how we haven't sold all this shit. Bellerin, Willian, El Nenny, all these man. He's picking, he's picking El Nenny over fucking Torreira, blood. This Arteta guy's a clown, bro. Absolute clown. <clears throat> 
damn right, but for some reason, we can't fucking beat him to save our lives. And with that in mind, we're going to turn it to the Arsenal-Chelsea game as well. And it's pretty obvious anyway, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. What's your thoughts going into the game? No hope at all, blood. You get me? No no, no Gabriel, no Partey. Um, we're going to have to see if Aubameyang and Lacazette make it. I don't think they will. Uh, we lost to Brentford, so... Yeah, we're at home, but you understand? I don't really have no confidence going into this game one bit, blood. Yeah, I kind of expected that too. I just wanted to see if there was like any glimmer of hope for you guys. Like For me, I can't lie. I'm fully confident going into this game. I think this little streak that Arteta has had over us has to be put to bed. Needs to rest in peace on Sunday, Undertaker settings, all of that. But I can't even be 100% confident going into this game. Because I've seen the script before. Arsenal fans are not confident. Their team's playing messy-ass football. We look like we're in a great shape going into the game. We're confident. 1-0 Arsenal. And our team just turned into clowns for 90 minutes. Now, I'm hoping with us winning the Champions League and it being a new <coughs> season and everything, maybe we see us go into the game with a different approach. But I thought that the last time we played. And then we had Havertz miss about three open chances. Giroud had about two missed chances. Zuma hit the bar. Our whole attack just had different individual disaster classes. Do you see any hope for you guys getting a result out of this game? And if you do, where do you think it's coming from? There's always hope. You get me? Funny, funny game football, blood. You get me? It's a funny game, blood. You understand? You never know what's going to happen in the 90. You lot will be more confident, though, because <coughs> Champions League, Super Cup. You had a decent preseason. You beat us in preseason at the Emirates as well, blood. You get me? So you've got that in the back of your mind as well. So you get me? The only way I could see us winning is every player playing out of their fucking socks, blood. That's the only way. And literally just praying all of that. Yeah, blood, you get me. Inshallah, bro. You understand? God willing, it goes right, blood. You understand? But Arteta's just, he's got something about him, blood. He just pulls out these little results out of his fucking, out of his fucking ass, blood. He always tries to, you get me? He gets these little results and people get excited with it, blood. But Bunch of mid results and then you beat a top six side and it keeps you in the job for another three months. Yeah, and I'm not with that, blood, like. I can fully see us losing to you and City next week, blood. You get me? I can see us nine points, three games, zero points, blood. You get me? Nine points, no way, blood. You get me? Six points, no way. Three points, no way. One point, no way. Zero points, big chance, blood. But if that's the case, then how long does it take before Mikel Arteta eventually gets sat? Because if this season's going to be anywhere near as bad as you guys are mentioned, like, let's deep it, like, um, Unai Emery, you got sacked in November and he had you guys in what? Was it eighth place or did you have you guys in lower mid table? Seventh. Yeah, seventh place and he got sacked. So if Mikel Arteta takes it to November and he has you guys in the bottom half of the table again, surely he's got to be up for the sack. It's the fan base as well. They're more concerned with Kronky. You get me? Like, Kronky's been giving him money, blood. Kronky's given him nearly 200 million and we're in a worse position. Emery never got that kind of money. Emery never got that kind of backing. And people were quick on Emery. Good evening, good evening, all this bullshit. Yeah, I, I I took part in it as well, the whole good evening. But I was bantering, you get me? Man, we're actually trying to violate him, blood. The players were violating him, you get me? Because he couldn't talk proper English, they're violating him. Mm. You get me? They're not respecting him, blood. We're in this position because of these players as well, blood. But Mikel Arteta is not the one to get something out of these players, blood. You get me? Emery was getting something out of Aubameyang and Lacazette week in, week out, blood. You understand? Emery signed Martinelli. Emery signed Tierney. Emery, Emery promoted Saka. Emery promoted Smith Rowe. You get me? Emery did all this, blood. Emery got to the Europa League final with Liechtenstein and Socrates as a fuck and in, in his back four, blood. And Kalazanak. I always thought you lot should have kept him, to be honest, especially if Mikel Arteta <clears throat> was going to be the answer for you guys. I didn't want Arteta. I didn't want Arteta. I didn't want this clown, this cone man. You get me? I didn't want him, blood. The fan base, bro. Fan base is a joke, fam. Yeah, you know what? That me and you can agree on. Arsenal's fan base is fucking ridiculous. But again, even by their standards, they can't hype up this season, which is just showing how dismal it looks for you guys. But we'll take it into the score predictions now. And 
Yeah, you know what, troops. I, I'm I'm asking, what are you feeling for this game? How bad do you think it's going to be? My heart says two one Arsenal. My head says two nil Chelsea. Two nil Chelsea. I could see a two nil. For me, it's either two nil or three nil. I, I don't see you guys scoring against our defense. I think my the defense is the only thing I'm not worried about. Like they had the they were the best defense in Champions League history statistically, and all of our centre backs I can back. It's just whether Alonso starts or whether Alonso doesn't start. It's about us going forward, and if Romelu Lukaku starts, if he doesn't start, I'm gonna go two nil. If he does start, I feel like it'll be a three nil game. I don't think we're gonna absolutely batter you guys 6-0 or anything like that. I don't think it's going to be that sort of scoreline. I wish, but it's not going to be like that. I'm going to just take a convincing win and then we move on to the next game, try and get a few more players match fit. But yeah, Troops, as always, I appreciate you hopping on for this video as always. Is there any other final thoughts you want to say as well? Arteta out. Arteta out. Damn right, all the way through. Let's go with it. Big up everyone that's locked in. You guys already know Troops' channel, Troops TV. I'm going to leave it in the description and on the title as well. So if you guys, again, if you guys haven't, what the fuck are you doing? But if you guys haven't, check it out, like and subscribe. And same way here as well. Like and subscribe and let us know your score predictions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Until next time, we are out, guys. Peace.